Laura Tyson is a member of the President's Economic Advisory Board. She is in East Hampton, New York. Gretchen Morganson of the New York Times is in Providence, Rhode Island. And Mark Zandi, chief economist for Moody's, is here in the studio. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mark, let me start, start with you. Among the, the two very important ideas that are being talked about this week that the president is, is, is suspected to be addressing on Wednesday is this idea of suspending a payroll tax. How much of a boost can that provide, and is it enough to help speed the recovery, as the president suggested? Well, I, I think if we su suspend the payroll tax for businesses that go out and hire additional workers, uh, expand the job tax credit that's in place today, I think that could be effective and be helpful in the next six, 12 months when the recovery really needs it. I think that would be a, a, a boost to the economy. Laura Tyson, how do you feel about it? I think that's correct. I think that we already have in place a credit. The credit can be extended or could be extended into a partial payroll tax holiday. I think the issue is really going to be uh, for new hires, all new hires, and then what size of the firm should be all firms. But this is an area which I think is really worthy of serious uh, discussion and with the possibility of some action. And Laura Tyson, I want to continue with the idea. The other thing that's talked about that might come up on Wednesday is making permanent tax cuts for research and development. Is that not something the president has talked right. about before? Yes, the president has been very clear about this issue from the beginning. In fact, you know, an important part of the stimulus that people don't talk about is really the support for continuing research and development. That's where U.S. competitiveness lies in high technology industries. We know that the R&D tax credit is an important credit that does affect how much R&D spending business does. And business accounts for something like two-thirds of all R&D spending in the United States. So this is important. I don't think this is something that has an immediate, as immediate a job impact as, say, movement on the current tax credits for the unemployed or extending or a payroll tax holiday mm. of some sort. But I think it's very important in terms of job creation over the longer term. So if we're thinking about growth and long-term good right. jobs, right. research is important. Mark Sandy, will either of these things or both of them together be satisfactory to the business community, which feels very uncomfortable, it seems to me, with the White House right now? Well, I, I think the uh, the business community is on board for the R&D tax credit. Sure. I mean, that's been in place since that's 1981. Easy. That's yeah. easy. We, they, the president has to figure out how to pay for it, though. So right. he's going to have to take some, uh, some some of the corporate tax benefits away to pay for it. And so it'll be uh, interesting to see how businesses balance it. Yeah, the what two. the trade-off is going to be. Yeah. In terms of the job tax credit, I think they're skeptical. Uh, you know, I think some businesses would find it uh, useful, but the business community, I think, would be skeptical, uh, saying, is this really going to help me you uh -huh. know, make a decision about buy, uh, going out and hiring a person? Yeah. Gretchen, let me ask you this. This whole idea of the president talking about moving in the right direction, wanting to pick up the pace, is there a predominant mm -hmm. idea of what it is that, that is hindering the economy from catching fire? Definitely, it is debt. We had a debt binge, the likes that we have hardly ever seen before. And frankly, Harry, it just takes a long, long time to get that out of the system. We're still really working down the debt that homeowners took on. And it's a, a difficult and really excruciating process. You can't do it overnight. Which brings up the whole idea, Gretchen, of this, this debate. Is now the time to continue cutting taxes if there is this overwhelming deficit out there? Well, I think what you have to worry about immediately is job creation. And let's just forget about the deficit for the moment, because when you have the unemployment rate where it is now, and you have incomes really being stretched, I think that that is the key to any kind of activity. And economic activity by consumers is an enormous part of our economy. That is really why we are in such dire straits. Which is uh, maybe one of the ideas in, in, that has to be in play is, is, do we have the wrong model to begin with? I don't want to get back to that in a second. First, though, I want, want to talk about the Bush tax cuts, right. which are due to expire in January. Laura Tyson, should the uh, Bush tax cuts uh, uh, stay in place for the middle class but be rescinded for, for the top at wage earners? I think, I think that that is the, the right thing to do, and I think that's the right thing to do economically. We have to worry about the spending power of the majority of the population. The 98% of the population for whom we, we would extend the, the Bush tax cuts, that's where you're going to get a high level of consumption. That's where incomes are highly under pressure, and we need to help people with their incomes and spending. I think for the top 2%, we know that income growth has been very concentrated there. We know they tend to save a lot out of 
income. We know, therefore, that the demand-creating effects of extending those Bush tax cuts are very small. I would say, yeah, let those expire. And if you want to, use the revenue, which is 35 to 50, $40 billion a year, mm -hmm. use the revenue to help fund the R&D tax credit. Use the revenue to help fund a partial payroll tax right. holiday. If you're thinking about demand, that's the right thing to do. And then longer term, you know, we can't afford the trillion dollars over 10 years to give tax okay. breaks for uh, the top 2% of the population. Yeah, Mark Sandy, I'd like to jump in yeah, there. Yeah, please. I wouldn't raise anyone's taxes in 2011. I mean, I think the recovery is just too fragile and we can't take that chance. I, I think Laura's right. In a normal economy, mm -hmm. the, uh, I don't think high income taxpayers would respond to this increase in tax rates because it's a small right. increase. But these aren't normal times, and I think high-income households are psychologically very, very fragile. They've seen their nest egg significantly diminished because of the decline in stock values and housing values. And I think we're taking a gamble with the recovery if we raise the, the taxes. You, but now let me say, I, I think by 2012 and 13, 14, when the economy is off and running, then let's phase them in, let those tax rates go, because we rise back to where they were, right. because we do need to address our long-term fiscal problems, but not in the near term. Because you hear small business owners say, if, you, if, if those tax cuts come back, I'm not going to hire a single person. I mean, that that's anecdotal, but is that really the predominant feeling among small businessmen? Well, I think small business people, I, I think that argument about small business is, is overdone. I mean, I think there is some merit to it mm -hmm. that small, on the margin, some small business people won't hire as aggressively, but that is an overdone argument. Right. And uh, Laura, what were you going to say very quickly? I, I was absolutely, yeah, Mark, Mark made my point. Uh, the, okay. the, there's only 2 to 3 percent of the small business community that would be affected by this. This is not the major reason that they're not hiring. Mm. You know, one of the things we haven't talked about is the capital market constraints on small businesses. Another thing the administration has been pushing for very hard mm. is this bill before the Congress to basically help provide capital to small banks that lend to small businesses. Right. Ben Bernanke said a week ago, you know, the interest rate is low, but these small businesses cannot get credit and we need to do something about that. Can uh -huh. we make one more point about the, yeah, tax, the tax, uh, the expiring tax cuts? The most important thing is that we need to nail this down quickly because I, in my view, the reason why businesses aren't hiring, the key reason is because of a lack of confidence. They're just nervous, mm -hmm. flat out nervous mm -hmm. and we have to provide some certainty in that. And we Could need that be done before the election? Uh, uh, certainly. I mean, I, politically, I don't right. know. I'm okay, an economist. That, but from right. an economic perspective, yeah. the sooner right. the better. Gretchen Morganson, I want to go back to the stimulus because as so many of these Congress folks are going back out in their districts and people complain about the size of the government, they're complaining about the deficit, they're complaining about uh -huh. TARP and who knows what all else. In, as we're standing here looking at it right now, just if you can step away, was the stimulus big enough? The stimulus was not big enough because you would have seen a you know, far uh, greater recovery. Uh, the unemployment numbers would be better, I think, if you had, uh, if we wanted to think the stimulus was enough. Um, but again, I think that it has to be targeted. And I think that what Laura, the point she made earlier is a good one. That is, let's go for things that will have a more immediate impact, like, say, a payroll tax cut holiday or a payroll tax holiday. Mm -hmm. You know, we need something instant. We need something a little bit quicker. And that is very stimulative. So I think these people are right. I know that they're working down their debt loads. They're still in a very difficult spot. Well, one of the things you've written so much about for the Times is the housing market. And one of the other ideas that's out there this week is this notion of giving people whose homes are underwater, mortgage holders that are, whose homes are underwater, the opportunity to get out. People who are paying their mortgages, but to get for, out from underwater and giving and basically handing the federal government the bill. Will, in, in the short term or even in the long term, do you, th Gretchen, does that seem like a viable option? And oh, by the way, we should say the government's efforts on some of these levels have not been particularly good in the last two years. That's right. I mean, I think that it, it, the devil's in the details. The HAMP program has been a big disappointment. That was the helping homeowners. Uh, the initial program that Treasury put out there has been very disappointing. I think that these matters are so complicated with so many different um, people in debt, second loans, first loans. It's really very complex, and I just don't see how it's going to provide mm. immediate help the kind that we really need. So is it is it time, that, it's, it's crazy to even talk about, but there are plenty of economists out there, Mark Zanni, who say what's really needed is a second stimulus. Is it, would you, could those words cross your lips? <laughs> well, we're, we are talking about other stimulus, right? I mean, mm -hmm. an R&D tax credit, mm -hmm. payroll tax holiday, job tax credit, uh, you know, all these things are different forms of stimulus. And in fact, uh, the federal government has provided a couple hundred billion dollars in additional stimulus beyond the Recovery Act stimulus that we put mm -hmm. in place a year and a half ago. So we are doing that. In, in my view, the recovery needs some more help, and it would be a, a prudent 
I think, to provide some additional help through some of the things that we're talking about. Pro Mo all right. Uh, Laura Tyson, what about a, 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 a more significant stimulus be be beyond the things, these, you know, a, a, a block here, a block here, a block here, but another, say, a couple hundred billion dollars? What about, say, something like a new <laughs> WPA? Well, I, I believe that we should uh, look very uh, we should look at infrastructure because we know before the recession, before the Great Recession, we know that we were vastly underspending on the nation's infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, you can sort of therefore start with the notion infrastructure spending is terrific in two ways. It creates demand right away when you go out and get the project started yeah. and get the workers started and get all. It also creates the ability to grow and be productive right. in the future. Although, so although Japan, Japan tried once. that and they don't, they, don't, they don't have a lot to show for. You know what? I am basically going to say, let's think about ourselves. Okay. Let's think yeah. about the fact that before <laughs> the Great Recession, no, seriously, sure. we, were we were spending in real dollars about the same amount on infrastructure as we were in 1968. In 1968, uh -huh. we were a third, a third smaller as the economy. Let's take an estimate. We have two trillion or so uh -huh. dollars of unaddressed infrastructure needs. You want to start with something really big. Start but, with developing a high-speed rail system. Start but, with developing, right. improving our air control, modernizing our air control traffic system, for goodness sake. Wouldn't that be but something? These but, are but things this, we want to do uh, anyway. Right, very quick, Mark. Anyway, but this is the, but it's important to realize, though, that none of this is going to make a difference in the next year. I mean, these right. are projects that are long-lived and take a long time, and we have to pay for them. We can't do this unless we pay for them. Okay, and when going of back course, to paying I, for I and deficits, that. and let's go back to Gretchen Morganson real quick. It is the threat uh -huh. of a double-digit recession has that passed? A double dip. Double dip. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, double, double digit. Double dip. Yeah. Sorry. No. No. No problem. Uh, I don't think it's passed. I mean, we are looking, uh, scrutinizing all the numbers. Some mm -hmm. of them look better than others. But uh, I, as Mark said earlier, it is very fragile out there. Yeah. So I'm not willing to say it's passed. Well, one, passed. In three, one in three probability. Uh, less than even, but too high to take a chance. And Laura Tyson. Well, one in three is higher than I've heard, but I think that we are in a situation where we're bumping along at a slow rate. There's a lot of downside risk. I think all of us agree here we need targeted policies for jobs, and right now the deficit is not the major issue. The major issue is slow economy, lack of jobs. 24 million people are so looking for mm -hmm. full-time work. We really have to get our priorities right and focus on targeted job and creation. And if any policies. of that is really possible in terms of being passed, we'll talk about it in our next section with our, with our political folks. Thank you all for a very spirited uh, discussion this Thank morning. You. I really do appreciate it.